Chabrim. I'm Stephen Ben Denoon, and tonight I am combining Israeli news live along with uh, teaching, mainly because the news that is going on that, mu that we're hearing a lot about already is Ukraine. And the uh, even here on JN1 here in Israel, Jewish, Jewish News 1 uh, had reported on the bottom of the screen about the requirement of Jews in the Ukraine to register with the authorities. Um, now, the more you look into the story, though, both sides are blaming one another. The Russians are blaming the government there in Ukraine, and the Ukrainians are blaming the Russians for dropping these leaflets that are requiring the Jewish people to register with the government or with the Russian forces. So it's really unclear at this point to know for sure what really is going on in Ukraine. Um, however, if it's the Ukrainian government that is requiring this, who is a Vatican-backed government, um, then we can only expect more of the same throughout Europe before long. So this is what makes things rather unsettling and disturbing as far as the events that are happening in, in the Ukraine at this time. Um, moving on though, and, and, and this is probably another reason why I really felt inspired to include uh, today's teaching along with the news itself is because of a passage that I was reading um, in Zechariah really has struck my heart. Uh, it is something that is, that is powerful in itself and, uh, and it is worth noting and it's worth mentioning if anything, it is truly breaking news on a spiritual level. Um, let me take you first, and I want to read to you from um, the Hebrew language in Haggai, excuse me, Zechariah, and we are in Bet, uh, which is chapter 2, and um, we are going down to about verse 10, uh, or in Hebrew, Yod. It's the letter Yod for that, for number 10. Says beyom hahu naum Adonai Savaot, Tikawau ish la lavehu, Altahat Geffen, the Altahat Taena. Now, let me read to you guys because you're more familiar with the, um, the Christian Bible here. And, um, I'm going to just read that last verse to you, but then I'm going to back up a little bit and read more of this. It says, In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Now, literally in Hebrew, it's, it's, it's you will, let me, let me, let me, I'll tell you what, before I tell you the literal side of this, let me read a little bit more. Let me back up right here, because this is pro a prophetic chapter. And of course, uh, we know this as Jewish people is prophetic. But um, it's rather astounding, quite frankly. And what, what led me to go back, I'm, I'm reading actually right now from the book of Zechariah and the book of Haggai, mainly because we see that it's the, one of the times in, in the history of um, the biblical Israel that God had two prophets prophesying at, simultaneously in their ministries. Um, because clearly we see this in Ezra. So, knowing that there are two anointed ones that is spoken of in the book of Zechariah, I thought it was rather interesting to go and see what the two of them were prophesying about once again. And, uh, and a lot of their prophecies parallel one another. So let me just back up here to verse 8. It says, Hear now, O uh, Yahshua the high priest, thou and thy fellows that sit before thee, for they are... are Men wondered at, for behold, I will bring forth my servant the branch, for behold, the stone that I have laid before Yahshua, upon one stone shall be seven eyes. Behold, I will engrave the graving thereof, saith the Lord of hosts, and I will remove the iniquity of that land in one day. And that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. Now, this passage has a compound fulfillment. It has to have a compound fulfillment. One, the iniquity has to be taken away in one day. And then secondly, it will have to be received. 
which will also bring, it, bring the prophecy to pass that the iniquity is removed in one day. So when we see this, I mean, many of the Christian people uh, recognize the branch or semach, as we say in Hebrew, semach, uh, as being none other than Yeshua himself. But the odd thing is here, the taking away the iniquity in one day, if we look at it from this context here, then we realize that what happened on Calvary is a fulfillment of this very passage. Because in one day, the act that he did there in giving his own life become the sacrificial lamb for Israel, the sins of Israel, fulfilled the passage there. And if we begin to look at it like that, then... God opened up something to me today that was beyond understanding. It just blew me away. Because as I was reading this, and uh, I was reading this this morning, I was astounded. Let me share with you again verse 10 of what verse 10 says. In that day, saith the Lord of hosts, shall you call every man his neighbor under the vine and under the fig tree. And going back to the to the Hebrew language, Beyom Hahu Naum Adonai Sava O Tikau Ish Larehu. See the word Larehu is to see this. You will call every man let me let me just let me translate it literally for you. Beyom Hahu Naum. For in that day uh, Adonai Sabot, the Lord of hosts, you will call, Tikau, you will call, or we will call, Ish Larehu, we will call every man or each man to see, okay, Larehu, to see this, actually to see this, Larehu, El Techad Gefen Ve El Techad Taina, to see under the fig tree and under the wine. The, 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 the vine. Now, the fascinating thing that really got me is when I read this this morning, the Lord showed me, for the most part, it's been fulfilled. If you go back and you recall, we go back and we recall in the book of John, that is written. Um, that was written two thousand years ago. A very odd thing happens here. What does John uh, record? He records a, a little story about Philip and um, Philip and Nathaniel. And we find this. It actually takes place around uh, John chapter one, verse forty-three. The day following, Yeshua would go forth into Galilee, and findeth Philip, and said unto him, Follow me. Now Philip was at Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter, and saith unto him, We have found him of whom Moshe and the law and the prophets did write, Yeshua of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip saith unto him, Come and see. Now, to give you the story here, what happens when Nathanael comes in the presence of Yeshua? He says to him, Behold an Israelite in whom there is no guile. And when Yeshua says this, Nathanael says, Rabboni, Rabbi, Master, when did you know me? He said, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Now, this is something that as Jewish people, we should be able to recognize. Uh, I mean, because clearly, what does he say right here, right here in our own language? He says right here, for to see this, every man to see this under the vine and under the fig tree. And here we have 
Nathaniel, he was under the fig tree. What was he doing? I have no idea. I mean, some people say that he was actually praying. But nonetheless, when he comes in the presence of Yeshua, Yeshua makes the comment. He said, before Philip called you, before Philip even got there, I saw you under the fig tree. And here we have the prophecy of the branch. Semach, bo. The branch coming. And we see the prophecy fulfilled. 2,000 years ago, this prophecy was being fulfilled right here in Israel. Now, ironically, as I said to you, it has got a compound meaning because, yes, we are also living in a day where Israel will, as Daniel says, the end of sin will come. In Daniel chapter 9, verses uh, 25 and 26 there, um, Daniel prophesies of that as, uh, uh, as well. So this is when that actually begins to happen. Now, this is just fascinating to me. And so let me just take you to that as well there because, like I said, this is, this is it's not over yet. There's still more to come. And um, so we go to Daniel. And, uh, and this is in uh, Tet, uh, Betet, and um, we have here 70 weeks are de decreed concerning the people and, and the, concerning the holy city to finish the transgression and to make an end of sin, to end, excuse me, to make an end to sins and to atone for iniquity and to bring in everlasting righteousness to seal up the vision and profit. So still, in one day, according to Zechariah the prophet, in one day, it is absolutely amazing. And here we see when Yeshua called Nathaniel, when Philip, before Philip got to him, I saw you when you were under the fig tree. Another amazing insight for my Jewish brothers and sisters to realize who Mashiach really is. I'm Stephen Ben-Danun with Israeli News Live and IsraelReturns.com. Baruch Hashem, God bless you. As you can tell, the sun has just set. It is now Yom Shabbat. So, Shabbat Shalom. And oh, by the way, before I close out, let me just say this to you guys. Tonight, live, Shabbat Live, uh, with Jason Egroff, we will be on live 4 p.m. Eastern Time. That again, that's 4 p.m. Eastern Time. I'll be live with Brother Jason Egroff on Shabbat Live uh, here in Jerusalem. And so if you have questions or anything, you feel free to call in. I'll be able to take your calls as well. Brother Jason always does that. Uh, thank God for him and the work that uh, he is doing as well. So look forward to seeing you then. Shabbat Shalom.